Welcome, friends, to Andy's Rec Room. This is my first talkie, and it's going to be on the tone arm I built. It was a project that started just over a year ago. And you may ask, why would you go about building a tone arm? Well, I had just finished overhauling my beloved revolver turntable. I've had this turntable since the 1980s. It's a fabulous turntable. Um, I decided, you know, just do a, a quick, you know, make sure everything's working fine. Reoiled the spindle and got a new cartridge. As a matter of fact, it was one of these lovely Audio Technica M95 ENs. Nude stylus, fabulous sounding cartridge. But for some reason, I thought there's more music in those grooves. I think I can squeeze a bit more out. So for years, I've been reading about 12 inch, 16 inch tone arms and the, the advantages with them. And I figured, hey, let's build one. So I did a bit of research and a couple things came up that were really, really interesting. Historically, one of the uh, projects that was just absolutely stunning in its design was the Pickering Unipoise 194. It's, it's, it's truly a work of art. It's absolutely stunning. But you can tell it's a little bit dated from the materials you're, they're using and so forth. Then I came across Stu Nellis and his um, wonderful 219 tone arm. He based it on an arrow shaft and a ballpoint pen. Absolutely brilliant concept. And I went, okay, this is, I have to go unit pivot for this design. So the project boiled down very quickly to a unit pivot tone arm. And I figured, okay, how can I do this on a budget and not spend a ton of money? Because I just didn't want to, you know, blow a whole, you know, whack of money on a commercially built tone arm and be disappointed. So I said, what can I do to build it from stuff I have lying around the studio? Well, what I did have was some wood, some aluminum bits. And I figured, hey, this thing can be shaped a little bit kind of to echo the unipoise from Pickering. So I started building it. Um, and as I built it, I just kind of started using some concepts that I kind of was familiar with from my professional life working in, in large scale audio isolation, uh, you know, where you want things to couple, where you want things uncoupled. So it started off with the business end and I figured, well, I have this nice piece of aluminum. I'm just gonna pop it down here for you guys. And I can shape it, attach it to the wood. So I ended up using epoxy and this is not, you know, the ultimate build video, but just to know what I used on this one was, I'm gonna go down here again, some good old JB Weld, clear weld epoxy. And what I wanted to do at this end was basically couple the aluminum very firmly to the wood to give it a bit more mass. And also having two dissimilar materials, you kind of reduce the ringing qualities of a tone arm. And as I went to the back part, I went, hey, wait a minute, I'm not gonna glue this part. That's not a good idea because you know there's going to be some nastiness coming back up your, your, your basic pivot point. Um, so, and also you just don't want stuff vibrating back and forth along the tone arm. You'll find this a lot of manufacturers, like there's a great video from Origin Live and they're actually a brilliant company. And uh, the owner was talking about controlling those resonances. So I figured, well, in my case, it's pretty simple. Instead of gluing the aluminum part, I'm going to tape it. So what I did for that part was, I'm going to pop down here again. As you can see, my very well used roll of Scotch Extreme double sided tape. And this stuff is fantastic. So taping that part created a barrier between the vibrations that can possibly come up into the tone arm and also any kind of ringing back and forth. This tone arm worked out very, very well. I was extremely happy with it. It still has a couple issues with grounding, which I'm gonna basically get some shielding on it eventually. But sonically, it was really, really good. Now, one thing what I wanted to do with this project was make it affordable, primarily for myself. But I also figured, well, there's lots of other folks that would love to have sort of a more audiophile type tone arm that's affordable without having to spend thousands and thousands of dollars. So um, I decided to revitalize my project that I started many moons ago and finish up my 3D printer. And what I was able to do with that was create a system where I could make parts very economically and the actual materials lent themselves very, very well to a tone arm. So I figured, hey, let's get this one going. So once again, we go back down here and I pick up the first incarnation. So what you have with this is you have two carbon fiber arrow shafts and 3D printed components to hold the whole thing together. What I did was I arranged a bunch of parts here to show how this all goes together. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you on this table the components involved in putting together this tone arm. So what you have here, starting at the front end, is you have the part that holds the two arrow shafts in place. It has the holes drilled. In this case, I am creating these four Ordophone cartridges, the two M series in particular, the red and the blue. And I have a little cover. And these two components are actually glued together so that they create a bit more mass for the uh, cartridge. And of course, I call this little guy the snorkel, just an easy lift lever for a uh, unit pivot so it doesn't kind of flop all over the place. Down the food chain, you got this component, which again holds the carbon fiber tubes in place. This plate, again, tapes to the tube holder. Just like I showed you on the wooden tone arm, it's to isolate vibrations either coming up or ringing back and forth in the actual tone arm. I use a three millimeter hex bolt in here and it actually has an incredibly well machined internal surface that can go against the ballpoint pen or if you want to machine uh, another piece of material to act as a pivot point, and it works very, very, very well. The last part is the counterweight. And again, I've made it in two parts, partly aesthetic, so it matches the look of the rest of the, the components along the way, but also, again, having it taped there is a bit of a damper. So you're trying to cancel out um, ex you know, excessive vibrations down these two carbon fiber tubes. And it seems to work very, very well. And setting it up in terms of counterbalance, it's very, very simple. You basically just move this part back and forth. And if you want to, um, in this case, I use some double-sided tape to hold it in place. You can use a drop of CA or nothing at all and just leave it be and change it at will. But it works extremely well, no problems whatsoever. So going through some of the comments I had in user groups, they were quite interesting. Some were extremely astute and others were just quite comical. Um, of course, my turntable is often compared to Lego or Fisher Price. And, you know, if you, if you got to go there, you go there. But, you know, considering the turntable is, you know, deep pore epoxy reinforced with a sine wave controlled motor. I don't know if it has that much in common with those other toys, but hey, go for it if you have to. But I just wanted to address one thing. One person had a very interesting comment. He said, oh, that's going to be the wobbliest, most flexible mess out there. And I want to address that in a logical way. Basically, if you're talking about a pivot point on a tone arm, if you look at companies like, you know, the Frank Schroeder magnetic design that holds a tone arm in place with a magnet, well-tempered labs, labs that has basically a golf ball and silicone fluid, they're free to move around. There's just not that much force on the tone arm to move it out of place. Um, so that portion of it was kind of like, kind of moot, it never started. A very interesting point though, that I wanted to address was how strong are these carbon fiber tubes and why am I using arrow shafts? Well, arrow shafts are incredibly, incredibly accurately made because for competition shooting, these things are like just extremely true and strong. And you have various amounts of grain, so you can have it very stiff or more flexible. And I just wanted to show you guys something, how strong a section of this tubing really is. So what I did was, I grabbed a couple of weights here. All right, it's a 10 pound weight. Let's just see what happens with this. All right, so this is a 10 pound weight on my section of tubing I use in my tone arm. But like they say in the commercials, wait, there's more. Let's put another 10 pounds on there. Okay, so now I got 20 pounds of weight on here. It's not snapping, folks. It's strong stuff. So basically, working with modern composites that are available makes it open to most folks to build one of these. As a matter of fact, I'll have the link down below over here. It's all available on printables. So you can go to printables, you can download the STL files, you can print your own Carbo Extreme tone arm and put it together in probably an afternoon. You don't need a big printer for this. All the components, all the components that you need to print are these guys. That's it. It's not an in-depth project. Tons of fun. And if you guys have any questions, you know, please 
feel put free to put them in the post. Happy to answer any kind of technical details. I can do a more in-depth build if somebody wants to actually see one being built. But this is my first video on the topic, so I'm going to see how you guys react. Please give me your feedback. Also, I do have some audio samples already on YouTube. And of course, all the audio file groups are up in arms. Well, how can you put it on YouTube? It's, the sound quality is so poor. Well, to them, I answer, get some better gear for playback. Sorry, but that's what, why you're hearing crap sound. Um, is it as good as 192.24? Heck no, of course not. But if you're comparing things, if you want to basically do a comparison between two cartridges, say, or two turntables, or two tone arms, like even Michael Fremer did a brilliant video on the $360,000 OMA turntable and another turntable, and it was fabulous. You can hear the difference right away. So of course you can hear the difference. But the thing is, is it as good? No, it's not as good. And so that's one of the sort of topics I'm going to be getting into later on in another video about analog and digital and all those <laughs> interesting points that everybody's kind of up in arms about but the reality is we live in great times turntables are great digital is great it's all good but it's how you use it and more importantly how the music was mastered but coming back to this project i'm going to end here with um these are the basic elements of the, of the tone arm the sort of philosophy behind the tone arm and if you're interested i'm more than happy to you know get in touch with me i can share the ideas it's open source no secrets here and hopefully when you guys will build one and then we can get it up and show it to everybody. All right, thank you so much.